talent, more fame, more money. I want to be somebody. <laughs> Not that chubby guy in my <laughs> mirror. <laughs> there must be something wrong with me. That's what I hear in my head. Hey, you're not good enough. You, yeah, you're not interesting enough. You're not educated enough. Not self-confident. Not tall. Not slim. Not cool. Not sexy. Not pretty. You, yeah, very not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> we listen to those voices, and then we try to improve. I was so lucky, uh, I moved in Baudry in the early 2000s and I met this man, his, his name was Christian. So uh, he lived a minute from my condo. So when he came to my condo, first thing that he did, he entered my place and he started to laugh. I said, why are you laughing? He said, you gotta come to my place. I said, why? He said, come. So when I entered his place, something was so funny, I don't understand why he laughed. It's because we have exactly the same furniture. Exactly. The same fridge, the same... Everything was identical. January 2013, I left my home to travel around the United States. I bought a really, really old car. A 1980 van. I swear to you, every morning I, wake, I woke up and I said, this car is going to break today. Like, today is the last day of this car. In pieces, in, in quite frankly, I did four months, like Lena said. Uh, I traveled over 30 states, I visited dozens of cities, numerous national parks and other natural wonders. And to me, this is the kind of trip that is worth dreaming about. I mean, most of my friends and family kept telling me that they would love to do it, but that they wouldn't travel alone for so long. Why? Well, if some were afraid for their security, quite frankly, most of them were simply worried they would get bored. And it came back at the table um, earlier. Why is it that we're afraid to get bored on our own? Why are we worried to bore ourselves? It's kind of frightening. And my girlfriend came up to me and she said, Van, I have a huge surprise for you. It's probably going to be the biggest surprise you've ever had in your life. And I'm like, oh my god. She's going to like propose to me and I'm going to get married and I'll be like, I'll have no choice but to say yes. Because I don't want to lose her, but like, I'm not ready, but I don't want to lose her. But, so, so I was like, what do I do? She's going to propose to me. But no, she did not propose to me. What she said was, Van, I know you don't have time to read. And you know how you always complain that you're stuck in traffic. So you know what? I have a solution for you. You want to read the book Aspire? Here you go. And I'm like, what is this? She gave me an MP3. And inside that MP3 was every single chapter of the book Aspire, which she read and she made an audio recording that I could hear while I would be stuck in traffic. So I was amazed. I'm like, oh my God. I'm finally gonna be able to read that book that I heard so much about at Mo Mondays, and, and maybe I will be a better person. So, what do you do when you doubt yourself? Because we have become a nation absolutely experts at analyzing everybody. Everybody so well, we know what makes them tick, we know what they want, we know why they're doing this, why they post that, what type of pictures they put on, how they want to perceive, be perceived by others. We're experts at analyzing other people, and yet we know so little about ourselves. Because if we spent half the time that we spent on others analyzing ourselves, we'd be way ahead of the game. So think about that for a second. The story that I'm going to tell you right now has to do with a friend, and this friend had generational stuff. Stuff that went back to the parents of the grandparents from 1600, 1640, 1650. Antique furniture, works of art, silverware, dishes. It was like a museum in their house. They had to sell the house. But they also had stuff that their parents kept when they went to school. How come daddy didn't come? Because my dad actually had been home. Uh, he was actually diagnosed with a slight of, of pneumonia the day before. So he was actually home resting on antibiotics. And my mom said, well, obviously he didn't feel well either. So that's why my friends came. Okay, so as we're driving home, I'm thinking to myself, something doesn't seem quite right. But I kind of dismissed it as paranoia and we continue on the drive home. Now, when I walk in the house, there were other people present. 
but noticeably absent was my dad. Because my dad was not a very quiet man. He would, you would hear him listening to the TV, the radio, talking on the phone, something. So I asked the logical question of, where's daddy? To which my mom responded, he didn't feel well. So I asked again, okay, so where is he? He didn't feel well. We've covered that. <laughs> so now, where is he? Is he in the hospital? Uh, and when she said worse... Real stories, real people, real inspiration, and a wonderful real meal. So please give our guest to Robin Desbois staff another huge round of applause.